Germany versus China. A technological showdown decades in the making. In one corner, the precision engineers who invented magnetic levitation trains, a revolutionary technology that promised to redefine transportation forever. In the other, an emerging superpower with unparalleled ambition and execution capability. Today, Chinese maglev trains race across vast networks, while Germany's original technology gathers dust on test tracks. And hovering above this rivalry is Japan, whose maglev trains now reach a mind-blowing 603 kilometers per hour, far surpassing both German and Chinese systems. This raises critical questions. Did China steal German technology, or did Germany foolishly give away its crown jewels? And why did China approach Germany instead of Japan for this revolutionary technology? Maglev is the most advanced train technology ever made. Unlike regular trains, which have wheels, these trains use controlled electric forces to float above the track. This gets rid of the friction between the wheels and rails, which lets the train go faster, more smoothly, and with less upkeep. Electromagnetic suspension, used in the German Transrapid and Chinese systems, keeps the gap small of 10 millimeters by attraction. Electrodynamic suspension, used by Japan's SC Maglev, uses superconducting magnets to make the gap bigger and more repelled. This difference in technology is very important for understanding why Japanese systems were able to reach faster speeds in the end. It all started with Hermann Kemper in Germany, who invented the first magnetic levitation train idea in 1934. This was the start of modern maglev technology, but it wasn't until the late 1960s that real progress was made. The Trans-Rapid Partnership, which would change the way people travel, was led by Günther Wilbier at Siemens and Heinrich Böhmert at Tyson-Krupp. By 1971, the first Trans-Rapid prototype could go 90 kilometers per hour and during the 1970s, the government provided a lot of money to speed up research. Germany made this technology for a number of military reasons. In his evaluations, Professor Klaus Knoda of TU Berlin said that Germany wanted to get ahead of regular rail, become the leader in high-speed transportation technology, and show off its engineering skills during the Cold War. The 1970s oil disaster also pushed researchers to find ways to get around that used less energy, Dr. Johannes Fotner from Munich Technical University talked about how Maglev promises to ease traffic on existing rail networks and have less of an effect on the environment. Several German Maglev projects came to life between 1970 and 2000. The Emsland test facility, which opened in 1984, was the most important. This 31.5 kilometer track in Northwest Germany was used to test Transrapid technology. In 1993, the TR-07 prototype set a new German speed record of 450 km per hour. Deutsche Bundesbahn said in 1991 that the technology was ready for commercial use, and Dr. Markus Bauer of Tyson-Krupp Transrapid confirmed this in his technical assessments. The Berlin-Hamburg line was another big plan. It was a 292-kilometer route that would have linked Germany's two biggest towns in less than an hour. In the 1990s, Matthias Wissmann, who was then Minister of Transport, pushed for this project and got the first funding. However, the project was shelved in 2000 because the costs kept going up and were now expected to be 6 billion euros. The Munich Airport Link, a 37-kilometer link backed by Edmund Stoiber, who used to be Minister President of Bavaria, was cancelled in March 2008 when costs doubled to almost 3 billion euros. Stoiber famously said in many interviews that he felt bad that Germany had made groundbreaking technology but couldn't use it at home because of political and financial problems. Germany's projects were held up by red tape and limited funds, but China saw an opening. During a state visit to Germany in June 1998, Premier Zhu Rongji asked if maglev technology could be used for the planned link between Beijing and Shanghai. In 2000, the Shanghai municipal government bought a transrapid system that was ready to use for a 30.5-kilometer airport trial line. Dr. Heinrich von Pierer, who was CEO of Siemens from 1992 to 2005, and Eckhard Schultz, CEO of Tyson-Krupp, led the technical talks. Both of them attended many signing events with Chinese officials. In Shanghai, building began in March 2001. By January, 2004, 
There was regular service between Pudong Airport and Longyang Road. It took 8 minutes to go 30.5 kilometers at speeds of up to 431 kilometers per hour. The Shanghai Maglev reached an impressive 501 kilometers per hour during testing in November 2003, which was in line with German technical requirements. The project's inauguration by Chancellor Gerhard Schroeder and Premier Zhu Rongji symbolized what both countries initially saw as a mutually beneficial relationship. What did Germany get out of this exchange of technology? The money deal, which included building contracts, trains, and license fees, was worth about 1.33 billion US dollars. This gave a much needed boost to Siemens and Tyson Krupp, who had invested heavily in TransRapid with limited domestic return. The Shanghai Line also made German engineering known around the world, which could bring in more buyers from other countries. Dr. Wilhelm Lahmeyer, an economic expert, said in his reports that Germany kept control of the patents and limited the transfer of technology to other areas. This meant that China couldn't start making a lot of maglev systems right away without more help from Germany. There is more to the story of how Germany gave China technology than just trains. The role of German tunnel boring equipment was just as important, but not as obvious. Herrenknecht AG is the world leader in tunnel digging technology. It was started in 1977 by engineer Martin Herrenknecht. The company sent more than 240 tunnel boring machines to 25 Chinese cities for metro and high speed train projects by 2016. Some of these huge machines had cutting heads that were 17 meters across. They literally paved the way for China's transportation revolution. One great example is the Jinan Huanggang Road Tunnel under the Yellow River. In just 110 days, a Herrenknecht tunnel boring machine moved 16 to 18 meters every day to finish a 3.2 kilometer underground section. This movement of technology was similar to the maglev story. German engineering made Chinese goals possible. Herrenknecht himself said at industry events that China's fast infrastructure growth would not have been possible without these German machines digging through mountains and under rivers. People paid a lot more attention to the maglev trains than to this movement of technology. Even though Germany and China get most of the attention when it comes to technology, we should also look at what Japan has done with maglev technology. Japan's SC maglev which was created by JR Central in the 1970s, is very different from Germany's TransRapid. While German systems use electromagnetic suspension drawing the train to the track, Japanese engineers under Dr. Yoshihiro Kiyotani pioneered electrodynamic suspension with superconducting magnets. These make strong pushing forces that lift the train with a bigger gap, lowering air resistance and letting it go faster. The effects are really great. In April 2015, Japan's L0 series SC Maglev set the world train speed record by going 603 kilometers per hour. Since 1997, Japan has run the Yamanashi test track with plans for a commercial Tokyo Nagoya line by 2027. So why didn't China approach Japan instead of Germany? Dr. Akira Tanaka, a diplomatic historian, has pointed out that past tensions between China and Japan made it hard for them to work together on technology. Japanese companies kept tight control over their maglev intellectual property. Germany, on the other hand, was more willing to sell its technology in order to make money because it was losing domestic projects. China's smart choice to use German technology changed the future of transportation systems around the world. There are now 450 km per hour maglev trains in China. This is a bit faster than Germany's TransRapid, which goes 430 km per hour, but still a long way slower than Japan's 603 km per hour. This difference in speed isn't just due to poor engineering. It also shows that different countries have different objectives. German maglev was made to use less energy, as German engineer Dr. Hans Weber has written in technical studies. The TransRapid purposely limited its top speeds to get the most out of the power in Europe's hilly terrain. For German routes, 430 km per hour was thought to be fast enough for the shorter distances between towns since faster speeds use a lot more energy. In technical forums, German commenters often bring up this point. 
Germany wasn't unable to make methods that worked faster. They just chose not to be as efficient. For their vast flat fields and longer routes, Chinese engineers at CRRC put speed and capacity first, taking advantage of cheaper energy and labor. In technical conferences, Dr. Zhang Wei, who is in charge of China's maglev research program, has said that their goal was to maximize throughput over energy saving. The German and Chinese ways of doing things are very different when it comes to building and putting things into action. China built the Shanghai maglev in just 2.5 years, while German projects stalled for decades. The Mont Cenis base tunnel through the Alps saw an amazing 57.5 kilometer section drilled in just 110 days using German tunneling technology. When you look at German infrastructure projects like Stuttgart 21, it took years to tunnel a few kilometers because of public protests and environmental studies. This shows that there are big differences in how things are governed. Infrastructure projects in Germany are held up for years by technology refusers who are environmental activists and officials. Dr. Klaus Müller, an expert in industrial policy, calls them this. Politicians from the Green Party, like Claudia Roth, were against the Munich airport link because they wanted to protect forests and reduce noise. This killed the project in the end, even though it had a lot of technological potential. Centralized planning in China cuts the time it takes to get approval down to months, and it can quickly get thousands of people on the job. Liu Zhijun, who used to be the railway minister and was later charged with corruption, organized resources in a way that made building go faster than ever before. There is a discussion going on about intellectual property and innovation because of these big differences. German TV watchers often say that China is stealing technology by pointing out how early Chinese trains look a lot like the first TransRapid. The license deal let China make parts in country, which according to Thomas Keller, an analyst in the field, led to systematic reverse engineering. China responds by saying it has spent a lot of money on research and development, filed thousands of local patents, and changed designs to work with freight and longer routes. Dr. Li Hepping, who is the chief engineer at CRRC Qingdao Sifang, has given many talks about how Chinese systems now use their own ideas that are very different from German designs. Another point of disagreement is maintenance and life. German infrastructure is built to very high standards by experts like Dr. Werner Schmidt at the Federal Railway Authority. It usually lasts more than 50 years, even though it is built more slowly. China's mega projects need a lot of maintenance. Will they last decades or fall apart early? Former Siemens maintenance director Jürgen Wagner has questioned whether China's rapid construction compromises long-term durability, pointing to early wear issues on some high-speed lines built in the 2000s. This story about technology is a complicated mix of pride and anger. A lot of people in Germany see TransRapid as an example of their country's engineering talent that was used successfully somewhere else while their own big plans stayed on paper. Different groups of people are interested in the story in different ways. Some are interested in the technical successes and engineering details, while others are interested in the geopolitical issues and global competition that are at the heart of the high-speed rail race. In the future, Germany may be able to bring back maglev with less strict rules and new ways of paying it. A Berlin test track for transport system Bogel and a Nuremberg link pushed by Bavarian Minister President Markus Söder are two new ideas. China also wants to build new Silk Road links through Central Asia and maybe even under the Arctic Circle. According to CRRC development plans, maglev trains will be able to reach 600 kilometers per hour by 2030. So who truly owns the future of transportation? Germany invented maglev, China scaled it, and Japan holds the speed record. The ultimate question remains. In this high-stakes technological showdown, who wins? The race isn't over, it's just reaching full speed.